What's going on, family? You are tuned in to Real Ass Real Radio 104.1, your nightcap of comedy. My name is Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Join the virtual studio with the big bro, James John, because Miguel is out actually buying a space shuttle <laughs> for the Saucy <laughs> Castle. <laughs> the Endeavor. That one, yeah. <laughs> the, the one that Tom Hanks was on. He yeah. That space shuttle. <laughs> Uh, Miguel's not here because he's buying the killer whale from the movie Free Willy. <laughs> Just so they can unfree him. That's unfree? <laughs> he ain't free. Him in that little pond in front of the, the sausage castle. Bro, that would be hilarious. Have the, you have the body in, you have the body <laughs> Yo, sitting next to the Dinobots, bro, that he bought That's last the week. The Dinobots, man. But man, we're joining the virtual studio with one of our comedy little brothers, man, uh, Roberto Font, aka Minnie. Minnie. He will be at the Orlando Improv this Friday. It is our first Funny Fridays at the sidebar at the Orlando Improv. I chased this brother down. He was my number one choice, and I told him that in message. I said, You're my first choice to do the show. I'm producing these shows, and I pray that they go well. So I got many to be the first opener, I mean, closer for that show. So you guys put your hands together and show your love for Roberto Fine, a.k.a. Mini. That's what I'm talking about, man. Welcome to the show, brother. I appreciate it, brothers. I appreciate it. Ken, thank you for trusting me. I appreciate it. A lot of people don't know that uh, you trust me now, but when I was a kid, you didn't trust me too much. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you trust me now. So, so we we, we going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that part. But we have, we, we have to start every we start everybody off. We know you're a comic book guy. We see your back wall. You love comic yeah. books. So you have to tell us. We start every comedian off. We got to know the origin story. Um, how, when did you, how long have you been doing comedy? When did you start? And how was your first ever show? Okay. So, first question, how long been doing comedy? It's been 11 years, about to be 12. Nice. First place I ever did comedy was at um, Austin's Coffee House. Okay. Uh, at that time, I was a uh, street pharmaceutical. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was a heavy drinker. All right. So, I was out there, you know, waiting for somebody to show up and, um, you know, get my goodies. And the dude who was up, he was just horrible. And I usually don't heckle. I just, I'm not that type of person. But I was a little drunk of them PBRs. And um, mm. <laughs> and mm. I yelled out, hey, man, it, you need to do better than that. And the dude who was running the room at the time, I can't remember his name. He's still Craig, running the room. Craig Norberg. Craig, Craig. He was like, hey, if you think you're better than that, then, then, then sign up. You sound so like I Craig. signed up, right? <laughs> Pretty good, right? So I signed up. And at the time... 808 and Heartbreaks had just came out. Ah, so okay. I literally did like four to five minutes, however long it was, about how stupid it was for you to be rich and make a whole album about a girl that broke your heart. Like you just Got get it. another one. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it. not that simple. it's not that hard. So yeah. it, it just hit. It hit. There were some dudes in the crowd who were named the Brothers Ha Ha. And they asked me, they're like, hey, man, um, how long you been doing it? Now I'm, I'm drunk, capping. I'm like, I've been doing it for three years. You're like, okay, well, you have a, <laughs> you made have a type it up. five. Hey, man. I'm like, yeah, man. They're like, do you have a type five? I'm like, sure, I got a type five. So they walk away, <laughs> and the owner of the place, he's like, man, I've never seen you before. Uh, you, you got a type five? I'm like, man, what is a type five? He's like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no, I'm like, for, for- for everybody ahead. listening at home, when you first start doing stand-up comedy, you go to an open mic. To go to an open mic, you usually start with a tight five. That means exactly five minutes of material that you've been practicing. So that's what they mean when they say tight five. Exactly. I had no clue. So he's like, hey, they're going to come back next um, Monday or Sunday, whatever it was, and they're going to expect you to have that tight five. So mm. I spent the whole week coming up with five minutes of comedy. In my head, thinking that this is going to hit. That mm. Sunday comedy. They see me and they took me on tour. I went to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and I think that's where we stopped and came back to Florida. I was oh, two months out. And, and wow. it wasn't to the end, it wasn't to the end of the tour that I let them know that this that was my first time on stage. <laughs> wow. Now, do you remember the comics that took you on tour? Yeah, they're, they're called the Brothers Ha Ha. I don't remember them individually. I remember that Louis' son. Uh, the guy Louis, um, the uh, really famous comedian that he he passed away. Louis Anderson. Yeah, he either his son or godson or something like that was their manager, and wow. uh, that's all I remember about. It was eleven years ago, but I never saw those brothers again. I'm still doing comedy. I have never seen them again. Yeah, I just, um, I just Facebooked them. I can't find them. Yeah, that's funny. So I ain't never saw them, but that was my first start. That's how I started, and 
it was a great start for me because it just threw me to the fire. Yep. Like it made me comfortable. Like I, I got comfortable on stage by doing that. So comfortability, which usually is the last thing you get. It was the first thing I got. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Now, let me ask you a question, man. You did it for a minute, and then I know you had to walk away from comedy for a little bit, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had my daughter in, and um, I ended up being a single dad for a little while, so I had to make a choice. So I mm. quit doing gigs. I would only do open mics every now and then when I felt like I was, you know, too much. You know how we are. It's therapy. So Absolutely. it feels like too much. You got to go and get it off. So I would go off and do one mic every now and then, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. do any gigs. Like, for a good three to half, three and a half to four years, I didn't do any comedy at all when it comes to gigs. Gotcha. So what yeah. happened? When, what happened? I'm sorry, Ken, go ahead. No, I was going to give another one. This Friday, August the 11th at 7.30, brand free show. First Fridays at the side of Orlando Improv. Mini is the closer. I will be hosting. Kermit Gonzalez is doing 10. Uh, what's the other brother name? Uh... uh uh, Trovador. His name is Chris Trovador. He's Chris doing Trovador is doing 10. 10. And I said, this is our first one. I got seven lined up. I need them to go well. So guys, make sure that you show up this Friday. And it is free yeah, to get in. James, what you was going to ask, bro? I, I was going to ask him, man. You took <clears throat> off for a little bit, but then you decided to come back. So I wanted to know what was going on in your life that you uh, got back into comedy. What, what was going on? The craziest thing in the world. I, didn't, I was forced back into comedy from somebody who doesn't even do comedy. I know, I know you guys know Jersey, right? So Jersey yeah. the Haitian Sensation. Yeah. So Jersey the Haitian Sensation has a best friend. His name is Antoine. He saw me do one of those yeah, open yeah, Shout out to yeah. Antoine, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So he saw me do one of those open mics that I did. It was, it was in, in the hood. Like literally a club in the hood. I showed up well, during those times that I was just fed up with life and went in there and did like 15 minutes about hood stuff, about how, stuff, how me selling stuff and all that stuff. So he heard me, loved it, and literally was going over Jersey's head for a whole three months telling him, hey, man, you got to hire this guy. You gotta... I quit comedy. He's like, you got to mm. hire this guy. You got to hire this guy. You gotta hire this. And out of nowhere, I don't even know Jersey. He calls me up, and he's like, hey, bro, I don't even know who you are, but they keep telling me you're good. I need you for a show. And that's literally how I got back into comedy. And that was wow. about three, no, about four and a half years ago now. And you fell right back in love with it, didn't you? Right from first, it, it was like love at first sight once again. I like it. I, I was right. mad I that it. I had quit. <laughs> to be no, honest with no, you. No, but 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 you know what? I believe everything happens for a reason. The fact that you had to stop doing comedy to actually be a father to your child, you probably got material from that. You probably learned a lot in life. You grew up. You got mature. You learned how to write an actual joke, my friend. And I've had the pleasure of working with you. You are very funny, my yeah, friend. Very funny and yeah, very funny. professional. <laughs> I'm gonna put that out there, man. I don't know As about the second part. But nah, very, very, that, 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 I, mean, that, I can't speak on that. He was there on He's time. There. He was there before me. He was courteous. Like, hey, James, what you want me to like? Nah, I like working with you. And I've actually had this gentleman. I've had the pleasure of uh, having him on my TV show, The Lowdown, and he killed that too. So you know, man, I'm a fan of you. When we we talk, we talk like men. Like we talk like real stuff, man, about family and life. So I like How's having going you. To? I was yeah, supposed yeah. to. By the way, uh, you old folks, I heard y'all forty year olds talking about this and that. I'm thirty seven, about to be thirty eight, bruh. Nobody warned me about this. I didn't fart it and passed out, and my high cholesterol went up just from a bad fart. So this is crazy. These days. <laughs> yeah. At thirty eight, this is not the this is not the time to be playing around at thirty eight. Yeah. Yeah. My blood went up. This, 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 this the crazy thing. I know this kid, but yeah. I didn't know this kid. <laughs> What? He grew up with my son. Yeah, I know this what? on Wymore Road. I know this kid, yeah, but yeah. I did like his friends are like my nephews. Like Back. Shaquille, Stop. his one his friend Shaquille. Um, what's Shaquille brother name? Ricky. That's my best and friend. Ricky, Ricky. Ricky. Like those are like my nephews in in the neighborhood. Yeah. So many many things. Yeah, man, I grew up with you. I said no, you grew up with my son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know my son. <laughs> you didn't know me. So go speak on how we actually knew each other from Wymore Road. Well, see, the thing is, uh, for those who don't know, I did not grow up in the best background in the world. And that the place mm. that I lived was beautiful. But the people I might have been hanging out with and doing the stuff that I was doing was not the greatest, even though they're still my friends to this day. <laughs> but there was a time where I used to be out there, you know, in the corner and stuff like that. And I would see, uh, you know, Ken come home every now and then. And he would yell at us for getting off in the corner um, and making black people look bad. Um <laughs> <laughs> So that was our, our first interactions was, hey, man, get off the corner. 
Y'all yeah. kids too young for this. You know what that I mean? Is true. That's the truth. That I do. <laughs> and, and I never put two and two together till you start doing comedy. And we start, and then I saw you around Ricky, and I yeah. saw you around. Mm -hmm. she, I was like, wait a minute, how you know my nephews? You know what I mean? Like, you know how James, you know how we in the hood, them, you know. Yeah, that's my cousin, yeah. those are my nephews. My cousin, yeah, man. Because now I'm now I'm at the Snoop Dogg age where I'm unk. Like I'm unk, unk bro. to everybody. Yeah. But but yeah. I went to Corona the other night. It was three old black dudes. I said, What up, Unk? And yep. I was like, What up, nephew? <laughs> hey, they <laughs> get it back. Tripping. No, <laughs> we don't trip. Hey, hey, let me say something. Black men don't trip. We they nah. we like, hey, what up, nephew? Man, I call this lady auntie, first of all. Mm -hmm. I ain't, I ain't your auntie. Okay? Nah, nah. You're like, ooh, ooh. Hey, well, my bad, auntie. I ain't your damn auntie. <laughs> Meanwhile, her wig is older than you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, her wig was in the fight in Montgomery. <laughs> by the way, hey, by the way, I apologize. I apologize, brothers. I was almost late because I got pulled over. Um, the cop got really mad because he said I had, uh, you know, what I'm saying I had a deadly weapon with me. So I, I do apologize for that. But um, this all I had with me. This is all I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, did it at home, hey, but he nah, got a steel Florida, chair. <laughs> hey, this Florida, you ain't got concealed a weapon no more. Uh -oh. oh yeah, I can just have it out. I forgot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> if you're listening, man, we got many uh, Roberto from AKA Mini this Friday, August the 11th. He will be doing my first show at the sidebar at First Fridays at the Orlando Improv. It is free to get in. This yes, brother sir. is front funny. It's gonna be a great show, man. We're gonna keep you around for another segment because it's something yeah. I want to talk about. I think you you can help me out with. Sure. But we but we got two minutes before we got to commercial. Go to commercial. Give me your worst show. Worst show you ever did. Mm. Ooh, worst show I ever did. I did. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't a regular gig. It was one of those. Hey man, I got a cousin who got a birthday party and he oh, needs some oh. entertainment type of gig. Worst. So, first, you know, you already know. I didn't know this. It was my first one of those. I didn't know this. I never been through this in my life. This is the first time it ever happened to me. I, I was yeah. getting paid. I was looking at the money and not the location. Okay. Yep. So when I pulled up on Paramore, um, <laughs> I realized <laughs> that it wasn't going to go right. You know, it wasn't nope. going to go too right. But mm -hmm. I got paid well. Now, the folks all in the front row were kids that they were, they were all kids from all the dope dealers. Mm. And they were just sitting there. I'm talking about five to eight years old. Mm. <laughs> and I'm talking mm. about crazy stuff on stage. And when I say yeah. stage, I mean the living room. And um <laughs> you know, standing on the couch like Charlie Murphy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Rick James. <laughs> but I had a great, I had a great night. It was it was a little bit, you know, when I say it was a bad show, it just I felt unsafe. It was the only time yeah. that I went Bruh. somewhere. And I felt unsaved the whole time. Even when mm. they was paying me, I felt like it was gonna beat me up and take it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> that's so. Bro, they gonna rob me of the money they paid me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I know where you live. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I heard these stories, bro. I think I think yeah. it's a story of Michael Blackson getting paid and then leaving, and then the cats that paid him robbed him later. Well, on. <laughs> I, I think I, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'd be like, Venmo me my money. <laughs> if you go, if you gonna rob me, you got to do it through Venmo. cyber security. Hey, you, <laughs> you got to hack me to rob me because I don't do cash. I, I, hey, I do straight internet, baby. There you <laughs> go. I like it. Hey man, Bye it's time. Friday, August 11th. It's our first Friday sidebar. We got our closer, Manny, uh, Roberto Fon, aka Manny. He will be there. It's me and Kermit and and and, and Chris and, Trevador. And Chris Trevor, though, we're going to get that right. But we got to go to commercial break. We come back. I want to talk some parenting stuff with you guys, man. Because okay. I read parents. something on the internet today, and I was like, well, okay, you taking it a little too far because my mama wouldn't give a damn. So we'll wow. be right back. Real Labs, Real Radio 104.1. Back, real last, real ready. A one hundred four point one. Your nightcap of comedy, guys. Do me a favor. Go out to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and follow us. If you want to see these beautiful faces, go out to YouTube and subscribe. And if you miss any of our shows in podcast format, you can go to iHeart, search Real Labs, and if you listen to James. Guess what? Seven years of our show. We are That's correct. Seven, seven years, bro. Years yeah, man. So please Thank go you. out there and listen to Real Ass from day one to, to present day, man. And if you've been listening to our shows, lady, thank you so much for the messages. Thank yep. you so much for telling us how much you love the show. We really feel like we're at that point where me, James, and Miguel, we just have a good ass time. Yes, it's just do. three comics, and we're sitting at a bar and we're just having a good time. And that's pretty yep. much what Real Labs is. So just imagine yourself, you're sitting in the bar with the Real Labs crew, you're having a drink, and we're just clowning, man. 
So we appreciate you guys for tuning in and following, liking, and subscribing to our page. We really do love you guys, and we really do listen to the messages, and we appreciate it. Uh, join the virtual studio with Roberto Font, a.k.a. Manny, this Friday, August 11th. He is at the Orlando Improv, the sidebar, first Fridays. It is our first one, 730. It is a free show, so bring your asses free. out. I will be hosting. He'll be closing. So we're all parents. Manny, you have a daughter, correct? Yes, sir. James, you have four. Four, four boys. I got Woo. two and a half. Um, so I was on Facebook today and somebody posted something about the brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. I don't know if you saw it yet. Not um, yet. I'm going. I know me and Kenny going. She's this young lady said that the movie was PG, but she felt like it was too much for her child to be branded a PG movie. Now, James, Ooh. your kids are, are older. Yeah. Have you, have you ever had that issue with in music? TV, movies, or anything Ooh. where you were like, this was, this might be a little bit too much for my child. Two occasions. First one, there was a movie that came out called Hansel and Gretel. It had Ryan Renner in it. And I thought with the title, it was going to be a movie for kids. My kids were like maybe 10, 9 area. And the movie, I didn't know, was rated R. And the movie had a bunch of cursing in it and whatnot and, 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 and adult themes. So I'm taking them to go see Hansel and Gretel thinking, oh, this is going to be a kid's movie. Bruh, like the first five minutes, uh, 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 a head got chopped off. They're, uh, 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 they're fighting demons. I'm like, I'm like, oh, and I'm looking at my kids and they having the time of their life. They're like, dad, this is great. Like, I'm like, don't tell your mama. <laughs> don't tell your, <laughs> don't tell your mama we here. How old were they? I did like they had to be like eleven and ten and like like young kids, man. Like they was like ooh, like you know, because they were showing like parts of a woman, but not like explicit, but like you know, they had certain adult themes. We'll say uh -huh. that was one of the times. Like oh, I done messed up, but it's too late now. I can't. I've already paid for this movie. You know, I got four kids, so that's like a hundred dollars. So I I gotta get my money's worth. So we we just took the chicken out of my my pocket and we ate it and we watched a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, okay, Roberta, your baby girl's how old? She's eleven, going on thirty-five. Have you had? Okay, mm. okay. What's the? Have you had an issue with that? If not, if it's not movies or music, TV show or anything, have you ever had an issue with your child? You're like, wait a minute, this might be a little bit too adult for mm -hmm. my kid. I, I I did, but it it kind of turned back on me. My daughter was listening to some music, and it was like Katy Perry. I can't remember the song, but I didn't like it. It was a little too adult for me. So I was telling her, hey, man, when I was a kid, we listened to um, music in my CD player. And she was like, what's a CD player? And then I felt <laughs> like I, you know, I felt like I failed as a father at that point. But either way, <laughs> I have one. <laughs> I still got a CD player, like one of my old school CD player from high school. I still got it. It still works. This is only forever. And I got a bunch of CDs, like old school dudes do, in yes. a box. Yes. So I yes. said, hey, dude, if you want to listen to some good music, go ahead and grab one of the CDs and go sit in your room and listen to some music. Little did I know that the CD she grabbed was Throw That Ass Back 2003. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so had a, you have never, Luke, had a bunch of Luke songs on Luke, it. Oh. it. Listen, Luke didn't even get, she didn't even get to Luke. I stopped her when she got the Cisco thong song. Because oh, you don't oh. want to listen to your daughter 11 years old talking about, ooh, that girl's so scandalous. You know I can handle it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a little mm -hmm. too much. You know? Hey, hey, Roberto. Man, you was wrong. We're wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ain't even lying. <laughs> hey, hey, James, I had to really think about this because uh, you know me, movies is my thing with my kids. That is our bonding because yes. as a kid, I didn't go to movies. So that's, mm -hmm. I took my son to see Kings of Comedy at six months old. Like, that's mm -hmm. how bonding Damn. it is. So I couldn't think of anything until we started talking about it. And I'll never forget, I had to Google it. Scary Movie 5. Oh, that came out in 2013, Ooh. and I took Junior to Ten see years it because Junior loved the scary movie. Friend, I took Junior to see every Jason. Jason was his favorite character. Jack, Kenny has seen every Jason movie. Really, <laughs> Scary Movie Five. Somebody was having sex in oh. like the first, and I'm like, Oh yeah, ah! I'm talking yeah. about but every. I was like, yeah, Oh my yeah. god, my, and mind you, it's a small theater in Winter Park, Regal Winter Park. It's like mm. eight of us in there. And my son is the youngest person in there. Oh, everybody looked at you like you was a horrible everybody parent, Everybody looked at me like I was like, oh, my God. Mm. Oh, <laughs> my God. And it's I raunchy look, sex. It's, it's raunchy. Like, and I look over at you. Now, it, 
I'm saying Scary Movie 5. It may, it might be something different. All I know is it was one of them comedy franchises yeah. that do the spoof movies. And I think yeah. it was Scary Movie 5. I looked up with my son, bro, and I felt like Chick McAdoo. I felt like the worst father ever on the planet. <laughs> like, Roberto T. McAdoo is my dad. I, I felt like the worst father ever. Oh, I'm your son having terror. a blast. I, I, he, he like, yo, yo, bro, yeah. it's, it's boo. Hey, dad, that's what I'm talking about. Hit me with the, hey, the first time I, Junior ever called me bruh, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> that's Junior, Junior was the original bruh, 2013. He, he was like, like bruh. bruh. <laughs> Man, we finished the movie. We left up out of there. I called his mama. I say, hey, hey man. I'm, <laughs> hey, man. I hey, want you to know, I took Junior to see Scary Movie 5, and there was some boobs Ooh. in the movie. They just boobs? What did you I was like, what? Really? Really? Hey, trip. I was like, oh, bro. I was like, oh, man, your mama going to kill me, bro. Kill me, yeah. Bro, so, I can't believe that. Bro, she didn't trip. But so this what got me to thinking. When I saw my friend's post, this what got me to thinking. I can't remember a time my mama stopped me from watching or listening to anything. They didn't. I mean, In our my era. My mama took me to see my first boobs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how old were Bro. you? What? They're kind of like the same your story. She took me to go see uh, Dust Till Dawn when I was nine years old. Oh, wow. You remember, uh, you remember Salma Hayek? Yeah. Bro. Bro. Mom, I'm digging think about back, that, think about that, James. I, My mom would it. take me to see Rated. All. My mom was a cop. So she any cop movie that would come out, my mom took me to see Colors. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> mama took you to see Cobra. Remember bro. <laughs> oh. my, mom my mom took me to see Colors. I was like eight. And I was crip walking like blink, 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 blink. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm just... And 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 the, and the reason I really got on this because one was my friend's post, the other one is music. Because when I cut my grass, I Bro. listen to R. P. Yeah, Bro, Usher. Can you? Can I get with it? Yeah, I was like twelve. I think Usher was eleven. It's Bro. only a sexual thing. Bro, we, we like we twelve. Bro. We grew up on nineties hip hop. It's the most misogynistic, like, like toxic. <laughs> Yo, music and, ever. And, and, and man, you from LA? You LA, right? Yeah. Crenshaw, so, so, so you was right there in Compton, like you in the heat of the game. You, you, Bro. you where gangster rap started. So when you grew up there, were you in? In like, did you listen to a lot of West Coast hip hop like that? Yeah, my mama, man, my mama has been the corporate of all my sorrows. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, there you go. There you but, go. Uh, my mama actually, to be honest with you, my mama's the coolest person in the world. She the one that taught me about hip hop and R&B and all that stuff, like Motown and all that. But she, my mama, would listen to Ice T. She would listen to N.W.A. She would listen to um, Big Daddy Kane. You know, as a child, I remember what first thing that I used to play when I was a kid was Slick Rick uh, storytelling. That came out in 85. I was born in 86. Children's so Story. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that was her favorite album at the time. So, yeah, my mama played all that. She be Most Puerto Rican ladies are either washing the house, you know, they clean the house, listening to the salsa. My mama over here listening to gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a little different. <laughs> and it's so funny because no one took that away from us. I listen to music that every music I listened to back in the day had that explicit advisory on it. Yeah. That's everything I listened to was that, man. And that's weird because we, we tend to shelter kids nowadays. Everybody tells, oh, you can't feed them gluten. Yeah, you, you can't feed them too much red meat. Like you can't, bro. There was none of that when we was growing up. It was go outside. When you first wake up, you, you eat some cereal, you jump outside. Bro, you didn't see me for another 12 hours. Bro, Bro that's what it was. You ain't see us. It was, I, I know we said because we the old dudes. It just was a different time, dude. We were just out there. Literally. Kids say they out here now. Nah, we was out there. Yeah. Bro. We was living, though. You know, we yeah. was, it was living. Actual real yeah. living, not, you know, behind a screen, you know? No, no. We had none of that, bro. We were just out Bro, we were in the woods all day. We were uh, yeah. three miles away at a corner store. Like, we just went out and did stuff, man. It was yeah. crazy. I'm telling you, man, when I was cutting the grass and that Usher song, and then after Usher, a Tevin Campbell song came on, and then a Monica song came on, and I'm like, we really was on something as we kids. Like, yeah, we was. Like, yeah. we were 12 years old, and we were listening to some stuff that was way... Out Absolutely, of pocket, bro. Yeah, way out of like, man. My daughter's seventeen. Layla is eleven. 
and they wanted to watch Scream, and I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, like, yeah, he's like, ah. I was like, uh. so, but I always hit the mom up, like, hey, is it cool? She's like, I don't care. It's just a scary movie, but it's not real. That's her thing. Her thing is, it ain't real. Yeah. It's, it ain't real. It's not. Yo. It ain't. They ain't watching hardcore porno. It's. It's not real. Yo, your ex wife like, backed me up, Ken. Like, okay. Hey, hey. I, don't care. I feel bad though. Yeah. I feel like, oh my god, uh, my son just saw boobs. Like, oh my god, oh my god. And everybody's in here watching me. Like, like my yeah. my my wife now, my new wife is like, hey, I think we're exposing these kids to way too much stuff and i'm like i know but they mama don't be mad at me so i don't <laughs> you know but but i agree but it's crazy because if you look at 90s ken i'm like i wish my mama would have told me i can't listen to no exactly Usher, exactly no bro NWA. bro we all listen to ll cool j bro uh, uh jay-z bro um, you know i'm a jay-z fan man none of that's for children man Go go and listen all. go listen to N words for life NWA bro. CD bro it don't matter she, she <laughs> bite it no, 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 go back go back and listen to that now bro and that's, we were in 91 92 we were 13 14 years old oh my god come on my mama loved this songs I remember listening to no Vaseline because of my Bruh. mom. Oh wow! Oh <laughs> wow! Because she loved like, this song. So, <laughs> so, so wait, wait a minute, what is what is this? Bro, bro. Come on, man! <laughs> like my friend that wrote the post, I actually I sent her a message and told her, "Hey, I use this as a topic tonight because I got I agree with her. I feel like if you put that PG on there, PG movies for us in the eighties were PG, like Care, Care Bear movie. Yeah, it wasn't no cussing. It wasn't no Nothing. in your windows. It was a P." G movie. So if I'm taking my eight or nine year old, there should be no sexual innuendos in a movie that's PG. No, it should right. no, it, bro. It you should not be. You can turn on TV now after a certain time on regular, not cable. They mm -hmm. saying words that you we you would never hear on TGI Friday. Like you know, I mean TGIF, bro. They, yeah. they, they cursing. They showing you all kind of like simulated Bruh, acts. Let me tell you something, dog. We gotta go to commercial, man. You wanna stick around one more, one more? Yes, yeah, sir. Of course. Bro, let me tell you something before we go to commercial. The most PG thirteen thing I saw on TV was Wendy and and Buddy kissing on Wonder Years. Oh <laughs> man, I was like, ooh. You know the most PG thirteen. They kissing on TV, mama. Ooh. My mama was like, boy. <laughs> Bro, you turn on FX now. Turn no, on they, FX. They they eating butt. <laughs> hey, with, that being said, hey, with, think, with hey, a fork and a knife, a bro. And <laughs> we have a commercial break. We got Roberto Fon, aka Mandy, kicking with us this Friday, August the 11th. He will be at the Cyber Orlando Improv, a very free show. I'm on that show as well. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, man. We're just going to talk comedy. We're going to trip out. We're going to clown. We'll be right back. Real hey, last. Real Radio 104. I like my ass medium rare. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Last we're ready a 104.1. Yeah, night capital comedy. My name is Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Guys, do me a favor, go out there, follow us on all social medias, YouTube, and everything, man. And we appreciate it. Send us some messages, bro. We always we will shout you out. We shout everybody Amen. out of here, and people Amen. love that, man. Uh, Miguel is out right now. Um, he is buying um Bill Clinton's ashes, and he ain't even dead yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did a he did a pre-buy. <laughs> He bought the free vibe, but join the virtual That's studio with funny. my brother, um, James John and Roberto Fon, aka Manny. But we gotta give a shout out to our sponsor, James. Man, drop that science. All right, before I do that, man, they doing prepaid ashes like college. They pre <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys, what else is funny? Uh, y'all gotta check out our new sponsor, who is absolutely amazing. I'm talking about Wine for Oysters. If y'all like good food and good drink, you gotta check them out. They got two great locations to choose from: one in East Orlando and their brand new location in Dr. Phil's. I'm talking. 7645 Turkey Lake Road. Y'all got to go there and do it. Now, if you want to have a great Sunday brunch, go check them out, man. They got unlimited mimosas, Bloody Marys, and sangrias, and you can mix and match the entire time. They got delicious food, French crepes with sweet and savory fillings, and they got some traditional favorites like shrimp and grits or smoked tuna deviled eggs in the Dr. Phillips area. Now, go to their original space in Alafaya because if you guys like entertainment, they got monthly trivia games. Also coming up, they got dirty trivia on August 21st. So everybody out there,
with a dirty mind, y'all need to go check this out. They got happy hours all the time. They got a buck for a shuck. That's right. Happy hours between four and six weekdays. Two dollars off on drafts and wine and 50 percent off cocktails and oyster shooters. Follow them on social media. Wine for oysters, Instagram and Facebook. And if you go there now and you mention real radio, you mentioned real last 104.1. You guys get your first oyster shooter on them. Y'all go check out my people over at Wine for Oysters. Tell them real laugh sent you. Yes, sir. And appreciate y'all, man, for being our sponsor. And we are going to try one Sunday to pop up um, and, and enjoy their brunch. I bring my wife and James bring my bro. Our wives love brunch. They love brunch. They and Miguel will bring out um, uh, Megatron or whoever, he, whoever, <laughs> whoever Mike Busey made him buy that week, man. <sighs> but we got Roberto Fon, a.k.a. Manny. And if y'all don't know, Manny is a comic book uh aficionado like yes. james and when you see this video many has over a hundred funkos behind him what was your first funko you ever purchased oh that's a great question oh yeah that's the that's the one that got me the first funko mm -hmm. i ever purchased was a original stone cold steve austin because i'm a huge wrestling fan as well come on so, talk about it stone cold holding the belt yeah with the with the skull belt i saw it i had to get yeah. it and then i just fell in love with him and it's been, uh, um, you know, some people spend their money on drugs. I spend my money on Funkos and comic books. Bro, nice. but, but okay, here's the thing people don't realize about uh, minority kids. A lot of us turn to comic books, man, um, 2000s and 90s, because we, there was a certain book that we all just could relate to. And I'm talking about X-Men. X-Men's definitely the story of civil rights in comic book form. And there was Malcolm X. Uh, and there was also uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, man. And those were definitely represented by uh, Magneto and Professor X, man. So every uh, brown skinned person I knew growing up who read comics, we definitely supported X Men. Yeah, yeah, no, man. That was like, dope. that's dope because I'll be real with y'all. I didn't, I watched Realize it. that. Yeah. But I, I, but I never knew my brother was a comic book guy like you guys. You told us he, that, yeah. He hid it from people because of the whole being a nerd, dweeb type Blurred. thing. But now, Blurred culture. Now, bro, like the world, you know, the, yeah. Like many, like many's into. Like I, you used to post your comic book. Was it Wednesdays? Like what was yeah, it? You I used to go. Every Wednesday I go to comic book. Every Wednesday when comic books come out, so it's comic book Wednesday. So every Wednesday yeah. I post whatever I pick up that week. Um, I got more than two thousand comics. So, oh, bless you. Um, and that's that's just raw comics, you know, the ones that are not graded or anything like that. So every week I go in and, and I re up on whatever I'm following on. But to to piggyback on what you said, though, I'm I do all this because growing up, mm, like talk you about said it. it wasn't something that I was allowed. You know, I yeah. grew up in in, very, in a very tough environment, and I fought being the funny guy and being the nerdy guy all my life. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I fought against it. Somebody called me nerdy. I want to fight him, even though I was yep. nerdy. If somebody yeah. said I was funny, I, I was like, uh, what's his name on Goodfellas? <laughs> He's like, what you yeah. mean I'm funny? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, I, so, I'm a clown. I'm a clown. I'm hey, here to amuse you. Know, you. Clown, don't you, think? you know yeah. what I mean? So that, yeah. that, when I grew up and finally realized who I really was and was proud of who I was, it just blew up, you know? Yes. I, I became a fanatic at that point because yeah. all my life was holding on to this inside, you know? Mm-hmm. And shout out to other guys out there like Vince Taylor, who's a comedian and a fellow uh, lover of comic books as well. And blurred culture has really taken off. Like, yes, it, it, there's so explain, many. Explain that to people, listeners. Okay, blurs are black nerds. Uh, and, we, and really, we've adopted everybody of color. It, it's a blur, if you will, man. Because what's going on now, there's a sense of pride that we take because we, as people of color, have had significant uh, uh, historical moments in comic books, man. Like, Static Shock came from a movement with black artists and creators who left the big houses and started their own imprint, dude. So we've really made history with it. And it's, it's great to see so many start... So many people of our, our, our background and community come together and actually say, we love it because that's that's what's going to get us represented in more movies. When we see it, like look at Blue Beetle, like Blue Beetle is Hispanic, bro. You got to be proud of that when you see him come out his own movie, man, dedicated to an Hispanic character. So, yeah, it's grown. It's become something that people are proud of. So I, I like it, man. And I hope to see more in the future, man. We need more. Uh, uh, heroes and, and creators that are that are drawing and writing people of color, man, because we out here too. Yeah, so you guys listen to Roberto Font, aka Mini, August 11th, first Friday, funny Friday, I'll keep saying first Friday, it's funny Fridays at mm -hmm. the Lando Improv Sidebar this Friday. It is our first one, so please come Nice. Out. Um, so 
I'm we, we we've been talking a lot. You you've been dropping some stuff, so now I know more about you. So you said you grew up a wrestling fan. Your first Funko was a Stone Cold was top five wrestlers of all time. Give them to me. Well, that's hard. That's okay. hard. I got you though. I got you though. This is my now. Now this is my list, people. So don't get mad at me. Okay. okay. And I might not go as back as, as far as, as some other people, but we're gonna go not by any particular order. We're gonna go Stone Cold Steve Austin, aka Amen. the Ringmaster. We're gonna yeah. go Dead Man, aka Undertaker. Amen. We're go, okay. Um. Yes. Yes, sir. We're gonna go Ric Flair, aka Nature Boy. Come we're on. Go, Come on. You know what I'm saying? I'm, now this is why I might go a little left. We're gonna go Sting because I love the Stinger. No, and no, then, bro, bro, we, we you know grew up in him in the South, man. Yeah. And then last but not least, the man who I thought he was Puerto Rican for more than half of his life, my man, Roman, a.k.a. Scott Hall. Really? Wow. You left out my all-time favorite. Wow. Who? 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 Rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, look, with The Rock, I love the what The Rock represented, which was a black superstar. If you remember yeah. at that time. We couldn't get a champ. Like it took no. Booker T, even though he's five time champ, he took him a hundred years to be a champion. So yeah, right. the Rock represents a beautiful. It's, he's like our Obama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's, a, he's in his own little category. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's like he's like the first black superhero wrestler that I like because you know his dad was somebody and other people, but to me, the Rock was that. So he has his own little category for me. Yeah. But when it comes to, I'm just naming the people that I I, I really grew up idolizing. Like I could not do anything but just say straight because they were so good at their craft yeah i gotta go with those guys i mean i left i left out a bunch of people of course because we don't need to but, name it five but but i don't know if i told you this but i i was a huge wrestling fan like back mm. in the day when, yeah, me um, too. Yeah. smackdown would come on and then wcw would come on for three more hours <laughs> after that bro. you remember that bro, bro that was I, hours I, I, i'm so much a wrestling fan i'm nwa Bro, okay. like back in the day, like, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. You know, I've told this story many times. They come to the Greensboro Coliseum. Was the Greensboro yeah. Coliseum, yeah. the Omni in Atlanta, yep. Charlotte, Minnesota. Yep. Those were the that's, hubs for NWA. And that's back in the day when it was wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. wrestling. We got the same list. Only, two, only I, I got Flair, Stone Cold, The Rock, but I got two because I love old school wrestling. I got Ricky Steamboat and Dusty Rhodes. Okay. Oh, oh that's the one, yeah. American Dream. Yeah, right, American yeah, Dream. Yeah, yeah. I gotta forget the dream. But, but the American Dream is in, in, in one of those categories. Like he he the man, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's you know, that's that would be mine. Okay, we we're gonna keep it going because we also in your comic book guy. Give me your five favorite superheroes. Wait, wait, wait. Before he does that, Marvel or DC. You can mix them if you want to. Oh, oh. Okay. Marvel all, all day. Right. Okay. Which is true, because I'll post no, oh, no, that's that's um that's um Marvin. I post something to Marvin be like, because I think Marvin is a, Mar a Marvel guy. He hates DC. I can't remember which one it is. It's one of them that Marvin can't stand. Okay. Like big time. And I post about it and Marvin be like, nah, they stupid. But you can mix <laughs> and match. You can mix and match. Like you can give me your you five can. favorite. It can be mix of Marvel or DC. Like who, okay. who you who you rocking with? Okay, if you want five favorite uh, characters in comic books, regardless whether they're superheroes or villains, or we separate them. You can do whatever you want. Your what five you favorite comic so books. If we're going, if we're going, going superheroes, I'm going Spider Man, Wolverine, uh, mm. Deadpool, Punisher, and last but not least, uh, Ghost Rider. So okay. that's my five when okay. it comes to superheroes. Okay. And, and, and once again, only because those are the ones that I grew up like reading the most when I was a little kid. When it comes Ain't to villains, that. we're gonna go. Of course, we're gonna go Venom. We're gonna go Galactus. We're gonna go. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go uh, Carnage because I'm a huge Spider Man guy, mm -hmm. and um, of course we're gonna go Doctor Doom because that man Victor Von Doom is that dude. I can't wait till they bring him back. They keep messing mm -hmm. him up. Mm -hmm. But not least, even though I'm a Marvel guy all day, my favorite thing Say ever it. about Say comic it. books is the Joker. I would give you that too. Yep, the Joker. Yep, absolutely. He's the, he's he, the most. He's the most he, he is the most. What do you call it? Uh, complex character ever. Like, 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 if he was in Marvel, Punisher would have killed him. <laughs> like, by yeah, now, yeah. but yeah. Batman's not a killer, so he's going to always capture him and put him back. But he's going to keep escaping and just causing as a, as a utter comic mayhem. Book fan, does that bother you with Batman? Because no. Batman is no. my all time favorite. No, that there's a reason. You. You're like, Yo, no, you're in all of this, dude. But there's a reason <laughs> he won't kill. Because he saw his parents murdered. That's the whole that's thing the moral with him. It's the moral, moral code. code. He can't. He can't. It's not even that he won't. He can't. Ken. He can't. Yeah. He can't do and it, that's, man. That's why he gets off the Joker because he knows it. And he, his whole point is to break that code for him to mm. make him. And, and that's, that's what the Joker wants. Back and forth. 
And you know that that's the Joker's whole existence is trying to get Batman that's to it. kill him. To kill that him. Is. That's what he wants. That's bananas, bro. He could have ended yeah. all this just been being a billionaire and just gone. <laughs> because if you look at any most comic book movies, the villain gets killed at the end. Yeah. And most comic book movies, but in the comic books, they, they keep going and going and going. And, and that's why there was so much controversy when the Man of Steel movie came out and he killed Zod at the end. Right. But Superman does not kill. So for him to actually make that choice to do it, that was a bro. It right, man. He calls ripples in the comedy. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. the People comic book crazy. community. They were going nuts. Like he, ah, Superman would never kill. He's a boy scout. How dare you? Yeah, so. People, people talk about toxic communities, talk about yeah. like NFL, uh, you know, people who love the NFL, people who love basketball, sports yeah. being toxic. Nothing is more toxic than comic the book comic book community. I promise you, they will yeah. they will go, they will do this and put their and just Glass <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, we, we gotta get up, we gotta get up out of here. But I do know this because I took Justin and Akeem to see the killing joke, and I was so mm. excited about it. And it was parts in it that wasn't in the, oh, the no. graphic novel. Yeah, and they booed. Yeah. The, they was like yeah. booing they in this happy. movie, bro. Yeah. They were not happy. And Akeem and Justin was like, "That was good." I said, "It was good," because I don't know the movie. You know me, James. I go watch them. I've seen every animated DC, Marvel, every movie. Like I just go watch them to watch them. I don't know the breakdown like you guys. So when I had to ask a friend, he was like, "Yeah," because they didn't. Did, blah, blah. I was like, "Well." <laughs> I didn't know all that, man. With that being said, we got to get up out of here. We got a minute left. This Friday, Funny Fridays at the sidebar. Uh, Roberto Font, a.k.a. Mini, August 11th. Brand new, free show. Can come on out. Mini, tell them how they can follow you, bro. Uh, you can find me in Mini Morales 53 at any platform. That's Mini Morales 53. If you wonder where the 53 comes from, that's my height. By the way, you can always find me. <laughs> if you pick up your baby mama's phone, I'm right there, too. Just pick it up. <laughs> Look hey, at it. Hey, that's he, funny, he, saved, he saved on the Chuck E. Cheese. If you go that's look funny. it up. That's you James, watch it this weekend, hey, bro. Hey, why Chuck E. Cheese is calling you? <laughs> Where you at this weekend, bro? Well, as you already know, Friday, I'm with you at the sidebar over there at uh, the improv. It's going to be uh, uh, La Friday Night Laughs, it's called? Or Laugh yeah, Funny Fridays. Funny Friday. We get it wrong. We're going to get it right. But it's going to be the first Funny Friday. We're going to do that. It's going to be big. Saturday, I'm with Jersey and Cocoa Beach. Uh, you can Once again, you can find anything I post to see where I'm going to be at, at Mini Morales, at any platform. But we're going to have a good time this Friday. I can't nice. wait. James, what you got this weekend, bro? I am not doing... I'm only thing I'm doing is whatever Michelle tell me to do. I ain't got no comedy gigs. <laughs> <kids. laughs> right. Sound like Obama. That. Yeah, bro. Uh, that be, and I'm I will be with Manny this Friday at the Improv the Sidebar, man. Got Manny, thank you for kicking with us. We appreciate it, man. Thank you everybody for listening you, out there. Shout out to Miguel who just got through buying the planet Saturn for <laughs> Mike Juicy. So just know the Sausage Castle will be having a party on Saturn. We got to get up out of here. I'm Jane John. That's Manny. I mean, I'm Kim Miller. That's Jane John. That's Manny. Jane, <laughs> tell him what to do. Take your ass to bed. Good night.